today we will answer the question regarding if the United States can be found in biblical prophecy. We will look at the ancient tribe of Israel called Ephraim. We'll discover the many similarities between Ephraim and America and how they pertain to the future of our nation. Yahweh Apostolic Ministries presents Revealed the United States Found in the Bible. Now, the question is, is America Ephraim? I want to stop here. I want you to write down on a piece of paper, A-M-E, and space, R-I-C-A. I want you to write down on your piece of paper, A-M-E, space, R-I-C-A. America. America. Ame comes from a root word of love. Rika is rich. So it would be rich love. Okay? And there is a richness of love in America compared to many parts of the world. Uh, it's imperfect, like we're all imperfect. The country, the United States, is almost symbolic of us. It's imperfect. You know, it needs things straightened out. But do we not need things straightened out in our own life? But all in all, America, 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 uh, it has, it does have rich love. I mean, it was America that gives, uh, that Yahweh used to send out evangelists to the world to evangelize the cross at Calvary, to evangelize the blood that was shed for the souls of mankind, that all men might be saved. Okay, now, the 13 tribes of Israel are uh, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Yehuda, Dan, Naphtali, God, Asher, Issachar, Zebulon, Benjamin, Manasseh, Ephraim. Let's go up one line. Everybody say Benjamin. That's two words. Can anybody tell me what it means? Okay, tell me what it means. Ben Hami. Son of my right hand. Son of the right hand. Ben Hami means son of the right hand. Amen. Amen. Who was the first king of Israel? David. What's his song? Shaul. Shaul. What what tribe did uh, Shaul come from? Ben Hami. Yeah, he comes from the tribe of Benjamin. These are little tidbits. The last two people, Manasseh and Ephraim, they came out of the a, 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 the loins of Joseph. If you notice, Joseph is not there. Okay? Because Manasseh, Ephraim, it takes Joseph's place. Okay? Now, these are the original 12 tribes. Reuben, Simeon, and Levi. Yehuda, Dan, and Naphtali, God, Gad, Asher, and Issachar, Zebulon, Joseph, and Benjamin. Okay? Remember, Joseph and Benjamin, who was their mother? Jacob had two wives. That's okay. Yeah. Don't be shy. Rachel. If you got it, you got it. If you don't, you don't. Rachel. Don't, 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 don't say it. Huh? Rachel. Is Rachel right? Okay, Rachel. Okay, Rachel. Rachel was the beloved of Jacob. Jacob had Leah and Rachel. And he had two of their servants, which we're not going to talk about now. Leah was the comely one, or the, the one that looked so so. And apparently, Rachel, she must have been, you know, she must have been a knockout. You know. So, uh, so she only had two children. Amen. And the two children was Yosef and Benjamin. Rachel died an early death. At the birth of Ben Amin. Okay, so now the 12 tribes. Let's go to the original 12 tribes. The original 12 tribes are Reuben, Simeon, 
Levi, Yehuda, Dan, Neftali, Gad, Asher, Ishakar, Zebulon, Benhamin, and Joseph. Remember, on the 13 tribes, you subtract Joseph and you get the two sons. Manasseh and Ephraim. Did I lose you? You're going to have to massage, massage the brain a little bit there. Okay, so taking Joseph out of the scene, his inheritance goes to his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. That's why they say 12, 13 tribes. Okay. okay. There's, everybody say original 12 tribes, yeah, but tribes. Original 12 tribes. Is, with Joseph. is with Joseph. Okay. The second set of tribes is 13 tribes. That's subtract Joseph and put Manasseh and Ephraim. Everybody with me? Yes. Okay. So, Ephraim. Ephraim means double fruit. Ephraim, a son of Yosef. Also, the tribe descended from him were called Ephraim, Ephraimites. And the territory, the geographical territory, was Ephraim. There was a person by the name of Ephraim. His geographical area was called Ephraim. And the people out of his loins were called Ephraimites. No. It has nothing to do with Egypt. Nothing. These are Jews. Nothing but... These are Israelis. This is from Israel. Yeah, no, no, no. It has nothing to do with Egypt. That's okay. Now, here's a question. The United States has a number of 13. The number of Ephraim is 13. Okay? The number 13 is symbolic of rebellion and lawlessness. Nimrod, the mighty hunter, who was before Yahweh, meaning Nimrod tried to take the place of Yahweh in the eyes of man. Okay, Romans, in chapter 1, lists 23 characteristics of sinful people who have a debased, reprobate mind. The third characteristic is that they are haters of Yahweh. So your homework is, put a little star, homework, read Romans 1, read it through, and when they start naming the sins, the characteristics of the sins, you will, there will be 23. Number 13 says they were haters of God. The spirit of Nimrod. Now, there's another facet or another Hebraic characteristic of number 13. 13 also means strength. Everybody say strength. strength. Amen. See, that is a plus, strength. And people can be humble, humble and strong. But most people, when they get strong, they get to be the opposite of humble, which is what? Pride. And pride comes before a what? Fall. Pride comes before a fall. So 13 is a good number, bad number, depending upon your heart. So you can take it with 13 being good by being strong in Yahweh, or being good and strong in yourself. That's when the spirit of Nimrod uh, would be now we're all lost and degenerate this is the call of Yahweh and Zechariah 1 and 3 return unto me says Yahweh of hosts and I will return unto you Hallelujah. how many people want Yahweh to return unto amen. us amen. amen we know that Yahweh has already returned to us because we have his Holy Spirit within us we've been born again the Bible states, uh, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then shall I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, number one, will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I believe that the United States is in the process of having the land healed by voting out unrighteousness, wickedness, and witchcraft in the Democratic Party. 
and voting in the Republicans, which is not a perfect party, but they are seeking righteousness. Okay? So, if we want our lands to be healed, we need to get down on our hands and knees. We need to cry out to Yahweh. We need to have a group prayer every day. Every day. Everybody say every day. Every day we need to pray for President Trump. Say every day we need to pray for President Trump. Amen. Not only for President Trump, but all righteous politicians. Yahweh, remember, Yahweh lifts up and Yahweh puts down. Yahweh is in the middle of politics. He raises politicians up and he puts politicians down. Yahweh raised up kings to either to chastise Israel or Yahweh raised up a king to let, to let Israel free. Amen. So Nebuchadnezzar, listen real clearly, Nebuchadnezzar was raised up to chastise Israel and he was a pagan. Amen. And later on, after 70 years were complete, Yahweh raised up King Cyrus to release Israel to rebuild Jerusalem. So we know that Yahweh is in the middle of politics. Yahweh wants us to go vote. Yahweh wants us to vote for the most righteous. Yahweh wants us to be active in politics. Yahweh wants Yahweh people to be a judge. Yahweh wants his people to be on, on, on the school board so we can have our children taught righteousness. You, you know, people say, you know, religious people say, oh, we shouldn't be in politics. That's why the world is all messed up. Yahweh's people needs to be in politics. So here's the question. The United States is number 13, and the number of Ephraim is 13. Is the United States of America a spiritual Ephraim? Amen. Could it be that the United States, is there a possibility? Well, let's take a look at some of the uh, things, you know, that are happening. We know that Yahweh raises up and Yahweh puts down. Amen. We know that we are the only nation in the world that will stand side by side with Israel. Yes. Amen. We, I believe that we are spiritual brothers with Israel. Oh, yes. Amen. Because Israel lives in us. In yes. other words, we have Yahweh in us and we will rule as Yahweh and we do rule as Yahweh. When we speak to people we are, and we speak the, uh, the goodness of Yahweh and all he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise Yahweh, amen. amen, amen. We, we, when we speak the goodness of Yahweh, when we lay our hands on people, we are ruling as El because Yahweh wants people healed. Is that right? Amen. Oh, amen. Yes. So uh, only in the United States. Look at what it says in Bereshit, chapter 12, verse 1. Now, Yahweh had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto the land that I will show thee. So we see step number one for Abraham was the same step for us here that are sinners. To get us out of your country. What does that mean for us? Not to leave this country, but to leave our sinful friends and our sinful neighbors. He separates us. Everybody say he separates us. We are a set apart people. We are a separated people. Amen. And Yahweh could not get a hold of Abraham until he told him, come out. So he was obedient and he came out. Verse 2, he says, and when you do this, I will make of thee a great Gedola Goy. I will make a Godola Goy. I will make thee a great nation. And I will Barak thee. I will Baruch thee. And I will bless thee. And I will make thy Shem. I will make thy name Gedola. I will make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Could it possibly be because we love Israel and we bless Israel? That Yahweh is using us as a blessing 
Amen. That he blesses us. Amen. Bereshit chapter 12 verse 3. And I will baruch them and baruch thee. I will bless them that bless thee. Whoa. How many people here want a blessing? Amen. We need to bless with a covering of prayer the sons and the daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. We need to cry out for them every day as we do for President Trump and all righteous government figures and their wives and their families to put a veil to plead the blood upon them for protection. Amen. And that the that these Democrats, these demon crats, will be found out with all their lies and that they will not be able to overthrow Donald Trump. We have heard this on the news. They want Donald Trump in prison. The Democratic Party even says it in public and on the news. They want him deposed. They want him thrown out. They want to find some type of little trickery, some type of little lie, so they can convince the people to vote him out and to put him in prison. If they could, they would have him killed. But right now, Father, we call a blessing. We call a blessing. Right now, Father, we cry out, we pray out a blessing upon Israel. All of the 12 tribes, Father, we cry out, Father, for Donald J. Trump and all of the righteous politicians. We cry out, Father, that you bless them and protect them, Father, and that these evil people's lives will be found out and their sins will be found out and that you would give the victory to Donald J. Trump, amen, to the Republican Party that is trying to work your righteousness in this country because, Father, your people, which are called by thy name, we humble ourselves and we prayed and you forgave our sins. And, Father, you not only forgave our sins, you're healing our lands, Father. And we come against Satan and we rebuke him in the name of Yahweh. Yes. Amen. Remember that. Embrace that. It's not only what you call the Old Testament. It's the Brit Hadashah. This comes over to our New Testament also. If we if we curse, amen, Israel, we shall be cursed. But if we bless, if we bless Israel, we shall be blessed. Now look, the curse not only falls on them, but also on their families. So when we bless Israel, we bless ourselves and we bless our families. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe we are in a season of the la one of the last trumpets. Amen. And, and I like that little, I like that little thing, Trump. His name is Trump. And I, and I like the vice president's name being Pence. And you put the two together. And it's a cute little thing. Trump Pence. Amen. We are in the area of the last days. We know we are not totally there yet. We were getting closer and closer and closer. The burning pains are getting stronger. I believe in the year 2017, I believe, I, I, I pray and hope that this year that they will sign that covenant. Amen. And that they will start their blood sacrifices, which will be the beginning of the last seven years. As far as a rapture, there is no such thing as a pre-rapture. There is no such thing as a mid-rapture. There is, But there is a last carrying away of the assembly, the last seven years, the bride. Everybody say the bride. The bride. Amen. The bride of Yahweh HaMashiach would be carried away in the last seven years of completion. Amen. But right now we see Trump. Amen. Amen. And Prime Minister Netanyahu, amen, shaking hands. We are the only country that comes to their, to, to their help. Could it be the reason the United States of America is Israel's best friend? Amen. Trump loves Israel. Amen. His daughter and his sons have, 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 have married Yehudim, have married Jews. Amen. 
Amen. And, and the daughter, amen. Best friends, President Trump and Prime Minister Netanyahu, they join a conference, amen. Israel can smile again because it's adios, arrivederci to Obama and his mama. Hasta la vista. Amen. Bye-bye. Amen. Obama and Mama. Hello, Trump. Amen. And look at the smile on Netanyahu. And now they're... They, 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 they had... It just came out in the news just the other day. I think over 235,000 new jobs started in the United States last month since he came. There, there is a, there's a sense of there's a sense of relief. There's a sense. I mean, I mean, there's a spirit you know running around the country that there's some people that are not saved. They say it's Christmas every day to me, <laughs> even though they don't be making no Christmas. But in other words, they're trying to say it's joy. It's joy every day that I wake up. Amen. And 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 they already have plans that we're we're going to pay less taxes. Uh, they already have started to complete the oil line. Uh, within a couple days, they're going to send thousands upon thousands upon thousands of gallons from Canada, which will save the United States billions of dollars. Amen. Because Yahweh intervened. Could it be the reason why Yahweh raised up Donald J. Trump for such a time as this? So, America... Is it the 13th? Donald J. Trump, amen. He has come in to be a king in a sense. When you're a president, you're a king. You're a king. You're a king for four years. You get voted in and voted out. There's power. Amen. He is the king, as you would say, of the most the strongest nation in the world right now. 2017, the year 577 in the Hebrew calendar. Amen. The year of the ruling sword. Amen. Yahweh was given to us as a gift. Amen. Let's take a look at Medeshit, Genesis. And, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put all this thing together. We're just laying a foundation right here. We're putting it all together. Amen. To show evidence that there's a great mighty possibility that America is the spiritual Ephraim. So, let's take a look at Medishit 22 and 17. It says, That in blessing I will bless. How many people want to be blessed? Amen. 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 We always need to bless the, the people of Israel. And in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. He's talking to Israel. He's talking to Yaakov. And as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall had, uh, say possess the gate of his enemies how many people want to possess the gates of their enemies the bible says that if we live righteously in yahweh he shall make our enemies what to be at peace, to with, be us. At peace with us how many people want peace amen we, we need to stand up amen we need to stand up for his name unabashedly we don't need to be afraid or ashamed big up oh amen amen we've had let me tell you, we've had people in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, I was beat up various times. The same people that beat me up that Yahweh, amen, had these people to become at peace with us. Yep. Amen. We held, on, we held on to Yahweh. The Bible says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I will strengthen thee, and I will help thee, and I will uplift thee with the right hand of thy might of righteousness. If you are ashamed of me, I shall be ashamed of you. Amen. Medeshi 22 and 18. This follows the verse 17. And in thy seed shall all the nations. How about that? And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Amen. So we need to obey the voice of Yahweh because guess what? In our obedience... Yes. Our inheritance, our sons and our daughters, somewhere is going to be blessed with truth. Amen. We did see, amen, and we know that uh, that uh, 
Donald J. Trump being an imperfect man and had a history of wickedness that he has repented. Amen. We see him at a an assembly of Shabbat. Amen. Putting on the prayer show by our black brother pastor that anointed him and prayed with him. We have not had a president to humble himself like that ever before. Trump is chosen by Yahweh. Is it possibly because we are spiritual Ephraim, number 13? And that is the most important book to him. He said he cannot do anything. He cannot do anything without the scriptures. He cannot do anything. That, that's Donald J. Trump. That's him holding up the Holy Scriptures. Hmm? That's right. Yeah. Pastor? Yes. We also heard on another Tuesday that uh, and he, he said, I cannot do anything without God helping me. Nothing. Amen. He has stated on uh, uh, CBN, 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 uh, Christian, yeah, Christian Broadcasting Network, Christian Broadcasting or CBN. Recently, you can check it out on the YouTube. He had a, he had a interview uh, with CBN and he said he could do nothing without the Bible. Amen. Bring Yahweh back to the White House. Amen. Let us take a look at some historical facts that shows the United States of America to be spiritual Ephraim. Amen. And in saying all this, we want to make sure that the gospel leads out from spiritual Ephraim, the United States of America, to fulfill the commandment of Matthew 24 and 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. For a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Psalms 33 and 12. Embrace it into your heart. Blessed is the nation whose Elohim is Yahweh. It does not say whose Elohim is Jesus, whose Elohim is God, whose Elohim is Yeshua, whose Elohim is Yahshua. It does not use any Shua whatsoever. It says, Blessed is the nation whose Elohim is Yahweh, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Isn't it beautiful to know that he has chosen us for his inheritance? We were not a people, but now we are a people. Amen. Amen. We are Israeli, we are Ibri, we are Yehudim. Amen. Psalms. 33 and 12, we can see the name of Yahweh even in Hebrew. We even see it in Hebrew. Amen. So it doesn't say in Hebrew, Jesus. It doesn't say in Hebrew, Yeshua, Yeshua. It says in Hebrew, Yahweh. Point made. Let us take a look, amen, at those historical points. Amen. Amen. Take a look at the flag right there real quick. Count how many stripes. Red and white. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. How about that? There's a numerology that has a blessing upon the United States of America. 13. Not 14, not 12. Take a look at the stars. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13. I don't believe that it's coincidence. I believe that evidence is going to show us that we are spiritual Ephraim, a spiritual brother to Israel, and this is why we have friendship with Israel and protect them and they will protect us. Amen. Take a look at the other uh, 1767 flag. Take a look at the inside the blue. 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. How about that? That is not by coincidence. Amen. Ephraim was the 13th tribe. Could it be? Is it? Are we the 13th tribe? I don't mean the 13th tribe. In the, I'm talking about in the spirit. We have the spirit of Ephraim. Take a look at it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 stripes. Amen. Take a look at the flags. Amen. Uh, on the extreme right hand side. 13, 13. Even our new flag still holds the 13 colony flag. Amen. 
Take a look at the seal of the President of the United States. Take a look at that seal, and we're going to go through it. Thirteen stars in the constellation over the eagle's head. I don't believe it was a mistake. I'm going to go backwards. Thirteen stars. See the thirteen stars? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen stars. I don't think it was a mistake. I think thirteen is hooking into Ephraim. Amen. Amen. Uh, take a look at the present seal of the United States of America. Amen. Thirteen stripes on the shield upon the eagle's breast. Let's let, let's read. Let, let's, let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen stripes on the shield. What is it about thirteen stars? What is it about thirteen on the shield? Wow. Things take a take a look at the take a look at the shield again here. Thirteen. Thirteen arrows in the eagle's hand in his talon. Why thirteen stars? Why thirteen stripes? Why thirteen arrows? Is it because we are spiritual Ephraim and we back up Israel and our president backs up Israel and we pray for Israel and we will be blessed as we bless them? Amen. Take a look at the take a look at the arrows in his talon, in his hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen arrows. What is the reason? Why is the artist so so demanding on thirteen? Is it I believe it's because we are the thirteen, we are that symbolism of Ephraim. And that we as the tribe of Ephraim bless Israel. Back during one of the big bad wars, uh, we had a, the, 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 there was a lady prime minister of Israel, Golda Meir. Amen. The Egyptians almost destroyed her. I think it was in 1972. The Egyptians, almost, all the Arabs, they almost destroyed Israel. And prime minister Golda Meir called up president nixon stop pause let's go to the childhood of president nixon the grandmother of president nixon told him and prophesied to him when he was a child someday he will be in a position to be able to help israel wow, that's awesome. spiritual ephraim they would have been destroyed but golden my ear called the united states and overnight we sent them all the armament that they needed to defeat the Muslim world. To defeat Allah and his banditos. The freedom bandito and Allah and all of his mess. Amen. Thirteen arrows. Amen. I believe we are the spiritual Ephraim. In Jerusalem is USA. Jerusalem is you. USA inside Jerusalem. Amen. You Jerusalem. Amen. USA. Amen. USA inside the Jerusalem world. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thirteen olive branches held in the eagle's talon. Thirteen. Let's take a look. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 13, 13, 13, 13. We are living in the last and the perilous days, and Yahweh is using that 13. Yahweh is using spiritual Ephraim, the United States of America, to help defeat Allah and all the Muslims, to come together with his brother Israel, to stand hand in hand with Prime Minister Netanyahu and Donald J. Trump in these last days. Amen. Thirteen olive branches. Did you know that there were also thirteen olives on the thirteen olive branches? This is neat. This is really neat. Take a look. Take a look. Thirteen letters in e plurus unum 
on the seat on the scroll carried by the eagle. Let's read the letters right here. E plurus unum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I missed one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13. Now let's go backwards. Take a look at it. E, e plurus unum. In plurality there is one. We are a plurality of the Bible, but we are one body. Amen. 13. 13 stars. 13 stripes. 13 olives and 13 olive branches. 13 arrows. Wow, this is getting good. Thirteen letters in Anult Coptis above the pyramid of the eye. The pyramid, there is another study about the pyramid which is symbolic of Joseph being in Egypt. And that the eye... Uh, is the eye of Joseph looking upon his his, his people, uh, which is Yahweh's people? Okay, let's go backwards now. And note, Copus. Let's get the letters first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, take a look at it. Thirteen letters. The eye of Joseph looking upon the twelve tribes. Because when they were in Egypt, Yahweh, Yahweh used Joseph to care for his people. Okay? Take a look at this here. We already did that. 13 letters. Take a look. And Noah set this. 13. Let's take a look at this pyramid. Take a look at how many levels. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Thirteen levels, thirteen arrows, thirteen stripes, thirteen letters on both sides. Thirteen, thirteen, thirteen. Thirteen layers of bricks in the pyramid. I do believe that the way everything is going that we are the spiritual tribe of Ephraim to help Israel amen that we have helped them throughout the wars amen even on the dollar same thing the same thing 13 13 13 amen so I, I believe it goes back even further than the United States of America. And I know that we've done this before. Uh, I believe that, um, I think it's the tribe of Zebulon, which became the Phoenicians, that they brought evidence here to the United States that Yahweh has his hand on the United States. Yahweh has his hand for the United States for a supernatural reason in these last and these perilous days. Amen. So history, it can tell us that there were Jewish Phoenicians and they did leave artifacts of the Torah in the name of Yahweh. That they sailed the seas, that they went through the Mediterranean seas and, and they went through Spain and Africa and they crossed the Atlantic Ocean. They came up the way of Florida. Amen. And they... See there, right there, they, 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 that big old sea, it's called the Mediterranean Sea. They, they, they came from uh, the eastern part of Israel. Amen. The Phoenicians, which have come out of the tribe, I believe, of Zebulon. And they go through the, they, they, they oh, and, and the, the, these Phoenicians, they, they went all over for trade routes, trading food, all over to China in India, in Europe. Amen. So take a look at that. That Mediterranean Sea. Take a look at the dotted lines going to the left and right where Iberia or Spain is. Amen. And, and they went through there. 
They had to go through there. <coughs> and take a look at this map uh, with the United States of America to the left. They had to make it around, amen, that little bowl up to Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, through Texas, <coughs> and then went up the river called the Rio Grande River. Amen. They had to go through that small space of water. It was a pretty large space as far as, far as we're concerned, but it looks <coughs> small from, uh, from above. So we take a look at another map, and we're going to see that, that they have left artifacts of the name of Yahweh in South America, in Cuba, in Puerto Rico, and in New Mexico. Amen. Hallelujah. Great news. Um, remember, the study is second, and the most the priority thing was if somebody's sick that we pray for them. And Sister Angela's horrible headache, it's left. Amen. We want to give honor and glory to Yahweh. Amen. We need to exercise our faith and exercise prayer. Amen. That ten hamitzvah, the ten commandments can be and are found in Las Lunas, New Mexico. It is written in Paleo Hebrew. It weighs 80 tons. And is believed to have been written thousands of years ago. Before Yahweh put a stronger hand and a stronger impression on finding the United States with 13 colonies, with 13 arrows, with 13 clouds, with 13 everything, that his hand is just on the United States of America. But we need to stay righteous in his ways. There is that 80 ton, uh, 10 commandments, amen, written in Paleo Hebrew that is over thousands of years old. That is the way that they would have to travel uh, through the ways of Puerto Rico and through um, Cuba, getting, getting close to Florida, going up to Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, at the end of Texas, as a river is called the Rio Grande and and they had to go up the Rio Grande because up the Rio Grande on the Rio Grande is Las Lunas Mexico where the Hamitzvah of Yahweh is found where the Ten Commandments are found let's go to another topic let's talk about our Indian tribes here in the United States of America Abam are they the biological Ephraim? Are they the biological lost tribes of Yahweh? Take a look at it. The Cherokee, the Cherokee Nation is in parts of Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Mississippi. <coughs> they have found <coughs> the name of Yahweh with our native brethren. Amen. They say, Amen. In their dances, amen. They say, Amen, the name of Yahweh. Amen. I believe America, America, love rich, rich love. America is Ephraim. His hand is all over it, but we need to stay repentant. And we need to put righteous political figures into our government figures. Cherokee arrowheads. This was found in 1860. Take a look at it. That arrowhead is inscribed and on it in English says the Torah of Yahweh. That is Hebrew. This here says Torah Yahweh. The Torah of Yahweh. I believe coming and going. 
Yahweh shows us signs that we are Ephraim, that needs to be in the spirit of teshuva, in the spirit of repentance, and living a righteous and holy life. And thank Yahweh that he is an Elohim of second chances. Thank Yahweh that he heard our prayer. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then shall I hear from heaven. That Yahweh heard our cry from heaven, and permitted us to vote that little witch out, uh, that Miss Clinton out of office, and the Democrats out of office, knocked them out, hallelujah, amen, and now we have a Yahweh loving president that loves Yahweh and loves Israel, Cherokee Arrow, found in 1860, that says on that arrow, the word of Yahweh, amen, the word of Yahweh, <clears throat> amen, same spot, head, in 1860, that arrow says, Melek Eretz, that means the king of the earth. <clears throat> so we have evidence, amen, that the hand of Yahweh has been on America for a long, long time. We just, America had just been living in a backslidden stage. And thank Yahweh, he heard the repentance of a nation and put a righteous president into power. Yes. Not perfect, don't get me wrong, not perfect, but a righteous president that is seeking righteousness for him, for, for the United States. Cherokee Arrow 1860, that says Kodesh Kodeshim, Holy of Holies. Amen. <laughs> what would American Hebrews be doing? What would... What would the Cherokee Nation be doing with all these images with all this Hebrew on it? Moses' image, this has also been found in the same spot. Moses' image with the Ten Commandments. The following five pictures are of the Ten Commandments at different angles. The following pictures, amen, is, is of that one subject right there, but it's going to be different angles. Amen. On the side of it, Amen. This was found in Newark, Ohio, back on the on the backside, orientated so that four of its five principal lines are upside down. All that is Hebrew. Amen. This is the foot of the back, showing the short line inside that candle, all written in the Hebrew language. The right side of the same article containing the beginnings of the three lines that wrap around the sides, upside down, as well as the ends of the single. It's all Hebrew. Amen. This is the top side. Amen. That is the left side. Amen. We are, Yahweh chooses who he will choose. Did you know what? The United States, America, rich love. Amen. All nations have come to America. They call America the melting pot. Amen. Whites, blacks, Hispanics, Puerto Ricans, Venezuelans, Germans, Irish, Polish, Russians, they all Cubans, they all came. It's called the melting pot. Amen. All people could come to America. Rich love. Amen. And find independence. Amen. And to be able to worship the one true Elohim in spirit and in truth. Amen. Orientals, Chinese, Filipinos. Amen. Amen. Is America Ephraim? I believe that America is Ephraim. Take a look back in 1590. The first governor, amen, of the United States. His name was Governor William Bradford. This is written on his headstone. This is over, wow. it, that headstone was in 1657. Take a look what he has written there. Yahweh, Yahweh is our help. Yahweh is our help. So what does that tell us? Even the Puritans. Puritans means set apart. Puritans means Kodesh. Puritans, we call it a religion. They were pure. That's what Yahweh wants us to be. 
Did you know that it was against the law of the Puritans for Catholics to come over? It was against the law to do Christmas in the United States because the Puritans were set apart and they knew that Christmas was a demon. It was a devil. Amen. Is America Ephraim? I believe that it's a yes and amen. I believe that we are spiritual Ephraim. There it is. Amen. His tombstone. Yahweh is our help. Amen. Hallelujah. Governor of the Plymouth Colonies. Amen. Back in the 1600s. Amen. I do believe that America, amen, is spiritual Ephraim. I believe it with all of my heart. Amen. Now what are we going to do with this knowledge? Well, what we're going to do with this knowledge is be that spiritual brother to pray for our brothers over there in Israel. Amen. We can still keep it on the, on, on, on the screen. Amen. And we need to, as a, as a brother, amen, we need to pray for our other brothers over there in Israel. We need to pray for all the lost Israelites, the lost tribes of Israel. Amen. And for those of you under the sound of our voice, uh, my voice, amen. If you have not confessed Yahweh, and put him on your forehead. Amen. I challenge you. Amen. To get down on your hands and your knees. And to cry out and say. Is your name Yahweh? Amen. Is What is your name? And he's not going to say Jesus. Because that's only 400 years old. If he says Jesus. That is the wrong spirit talking to you. Because that name is only 400 years old. Have you confessed Yahweh. Hamashiach as your master and savior. When you do, you put him on your forehead because your forehead is your mind control, like uh, Sister Prodell stated. Amen. With our mind, our mind tells us to get up, our mind tells us to go to the refrigerator, our mind tells us to get dressed. Amen. Our mind is our control center, it's with our mind. Choose ye this day whom thou shalt serve. Yeah. What are we going to do with the knowledge of America being Ephraim? We need to stand up and live righteous and we be able to preach the gospel in power and truth and lay hands on the sick. Amen. And let people know. Yoel 2 and 32. Acts 2 and 21. Romans 10 and 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be saved. Amen. If you out there have not been baptized in the precious name of Yahweh HaMashiach for the remission of sins, give us a phone call. 713-494-2164. And in Spanish, if you want to speak to Spanish, our telephone number is 803-761-8671. Amen. And if you want to speak to a sister, amen, in Spanish, and want to know we get baptized so we can give you direction, the her phone number would be 224-413-6796. Amen. Hallelujah. Huh? Amen. And, and if, 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 if uh, the 713 phone number is busy, there's another 713 phone number that you can call. Listen to this number. 713-494-2012. Amen. And if, if all those numbers are busy, uh, you can call this other number. Listen to this number. 215-206-6687. Uh, Your husband's phone number. 215-873-1546. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I caught her on that one. <laughs> Amen. So, if you have not been baptized in Yahweh's name, I challenge you to get on your hands and on your knees and seek with fear and trembling, amen, knowing, hallelujah, that there is a name that is above every other name, and that name is not Jesus. There's a name under heaven given among men where by one say, and that name is not Yeshua, Yahshua, Yahushua, that name is Yahweh. Amen. 
because he is the rock of offense and the stone of stumbling. The name of Yahweh is still a rock of offense to many people. If Yahweh is offending you, if it is your rock, your stumbling stone and rock of offense, if you stumble at the name of Yahweh, if you're offended at the name of Yahweh, your spirit is not lined up with the word of Yahweh because Isaiah chapter 8 verse 13 and 14 states definitely that the stumbling stone's name is Yahweh and the rock of offense is named Yahweh. I beg of you, humble yourselves before the spirit of truth, amen, and confess Yahweh and be baptized under water in Yahweh's name. Dear viewers, we are living in the last days. We invest time and effort to bring you quality content for the benefit of your soul. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. You will receive notifications on when we upload new videos and when we stream our services live. If this video has edified to you, give it a thumbs up. Finally, spread the truth around the world by sharing this video in every way you can. Thank you for watching.